As we move into the colder, shorter days, mental health is on the minds of many. Seasonal affective disorder is very real, and putting measures into place to curb it is crucial. Tonight, we take a walk with Dan Rubenstein, Canadian author of Born to Walk. Rubenstein talks about the transformative properties of walking for physical and mental health. My name is Dan Rubenstein. I'm a writer and obsessive walker who lives here in Ottawa. I love everything about it. I mean, it's, it's the easiest and most accessible form of exercise. It's a way to kind of reconnect to your neighborhood and natural spaces around you. In terms of mental health and psychological restoration, it slows you down. It helps you find balance and perspective. When I was working on my book, Born to Walk, which is essentially about the transformative properties of walking, including physical and mental health, but also spiritual, social, economic, and so forth. I spent about a year and a half traveling to walk with people throughout Canada, the US and the UK, people whose lives and work and research revolve around walking. One of the, the projects I did for that book was a three-week winter walk with an indigenous group in Quebec between two remote communities. So that was about four or 500 kilometers. Any kind of... Um, outdoor activity connects you to the, the, the human and natural ecosystem that you're part of. It's not just the act of walking and it's not just the places we're walking, it's we're rediscovering connections to the natural landscapes in which we live. It's, just, it's a beautiful way to, to get into the trees and to get into the bird song and to kind of lose yourself and you forget that you're in the middle of, uh, you know, uh, of an urban big city neighborhood and when you when you emerge you feel like you've traveled somewhere else and that's one of the uh, really restorative things about spending active time in natural spaces it, it provides a sense of escape you feel like you've been on a journey and I can I can get that by walking through this trail even though it's, it's a 10 minute walk from my house and it's it's just a little green space in the middle of a big city our aging society and increasing healthcare costs and demands and illnesses such as obesity and diabetes and even psychological conditions such as depression and ADHD. All of these things walking can help address. Uh, according to many uh, doctors and, and health researchers I've talked to, walking will provide the biggest returns. So if we kind of reoriented ourselves towards uh, encouraging and supporting walking, this will have a huge impact on our collective health in so many ways. It keeps you physically and mentally healthy. It can help alleviate disconnection and loneliness. Um, it's, it's one of the real strong drivers of holistic health. The problem is it's not particularly sexy or exciting. It's just kind of boring old walking. You know, we're, we're, we're a culture and a society fixated on, on speed. So when, when we think about how do we as a society do things to help, you know, aging populations stay healthy, we don't think about Huh, we should get more people walking. All you need is a pair of shoes, and that's it. You know, and you don't even need shoes. <laughs> well, Ottawa has these amazing kind of signature walks. What it's not so great on is the neighborhoods are that vibrant or interconnected, and they don't necessarily have the walking uh, facilities or culture that you would see in in a Toronto or in, or in New York. But but we're getting there, and that's another thing I think the pandemic is, is kind of reawakening, is that people are rediscovering this, this love for and connection to walking. The more Ottawans walk, the more the, the infrastructure and the facilities that walkers are drawn to will emerge. People often ask me, um, since I, I write and talk about walking a lot, what, what's your favorite place to walk? And my, my answer is always the same. My favorite walk is always from where I am to where I have to go. I don't map it, I don't follow a, a, a prescribed route, I just kind of have the start point and the end point. I think that's, that's, that's something that's intrinsically human that we've lost or are leaving behind to a large extent in, in our really fast digital kind of modern world is that we don't leave things to chance. When you're walking and just kind of following your instincts and natural cues, you never know what you're going to see or do, you never know where you're going to end up. And, and walking opens you up to a sense of discovery, a sense of possibility, and that's, that is one of the things I really love about it. If there is a silver lining to these difficult and challenging months, it's the fact that maybe we are rediscovering how central and essential walking is to, to us as a species, and maybe 
we're all going to start doing it a little bit more and that's that's a really good thing.